this is Neil. That's Chris. It's really early in the morning. Start the freaking theme music. It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, this is Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. You can give me a little bit more than that, man. And I'm Come Chris. On. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, buddy. Woo. I know it's early in the morning. And we usually we do this in the afternoons when we've been awake all day. But usually in the evenings, subscribe. dude. It's like so I usually do this at 6 30 on a Thursday. But yeah, it's... dude, that's why you get up. If I say 10 o'clock, you get up at 8 o'clock. So you can wake up, get that caffeine going, do a couple, you know, do, you know, whatever gets you motivated and going. Like I got Neo. I have. Uh, I have a shake with uh, all the vitamins today. Come just, on. Just to get to you. I'm good. Let's do this. Let's do you this. Need, you, need caffeine. you need caffeine, bro. <laughs> all right. Today we're reviewing two really creepy, fucked up movies. Yeah. That's all that Chris likes to watch anymore. Uh, 100%. Yeah. It's like, can't we just have a happy movie anymore? Yeah. Well, someday we will. <laughs> someday. All right. Well, the first movie that we were watching is uh, been going around the world for a couple of weeks now, and it is Men featuring uh, Jesse Buckley. I have to say, Mr. Sneed, I'm disappointed in this institution and in you. When our days are at an end and we stand before the Lord, he will weigh the color of our immortal souls and judge us lacking. Have we not shown an unflagging commitment to excellence in his name? And if we have failed in our devotion to him, then you and I are going straight to the hot place. And Orietta Mayflower has no intention of sweating out eternity at the end of the devil's pitchfork. Good day, sir. That was from uh, one of the seasons of Fargo that's, I think, underrated. Honestly, really? Yeah, I think since nice. Really. Yeah, yeah. You think it's underrated? That that season for sure. Hey, do me a favor, real quick. Just huh? go. La, 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 la. There you go. Get that morning. Get that morning voice going, bro. Yeah. Uh, you think, sound like you just smoked a pack of Newports and like are drinking like straight coffee. I may have, um, but no, like uh, <laughs> I think that season of Fargo that that yeah. uh, Jesse Buck is in is a super underrated season. But you know, that's how we roll. Um, That's how we roll. Uh, also starring in this movie, who plays 942 different roles <laughs> in this movie, uh, Rory Kinnear. Kinnear. That's what I said. Okay, I will. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. If you give me a blowjob. You what? Take it or leave it. Sorry, are you, are you out of your fucking mind? Oh, come on, it wouldn't hurt. Just a tiny little blowjob. Ooh. And then I won't dismantle your web of deceit, little miss. Love it. Not gonna give you a no job, so. Hand job? No. But necklace? Sure. Kiss? Stop. Please, Stop. come on! I just want to fulfill a lifelong ambition. Okay, okay. I do one kiss, okay? With tongues? No tongues. Oh. No? But in the toilets? Yeah, in the toilets. And it has to be tonight. Okay. Otherwise, I won't find you again. Sure. Because you have no online presence. Can I go now? Yes. But I'll be watching. So that's how I met my wife. Exactly for word yeah. for word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's also he's also in like all the Bond movies and stuff like that. But you can't really find a nice little clip. And, and as soon as I found that clip, how am I going to not? How am I going to choose anything yeah. else? Yeah. How am I going to choose anything else? Um, also, Gail Rankin's in this movie as well, but yeah. uh, I couldn't find a clip for her. Yeah, yeah. Even though she's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just couldn't find a good one for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we got uh, Papa Esasada. I think that's right. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, it is. It's Papa Esasada. Finn had mm. created a parallel business for himself. It wasn't sustainable. He robbed new investors to pay off the old ones, including this boy's father. He stole from him to pay off an increase in deficit, but he had no intention of paying him back, so instead he had him killed, him and his entire family. But it still wasn't enough. So he stole the half billion from Luan and the Nigerians. I saw that money disappear in front of my eyes. We both did. A couple of timed bank transfers triggered a week after he would have left. By the time he planned to vanish, he'd taken over a billion and a half. That's from Gangs of London. Yes. Yeah. Very, very popular show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in London. <laughs> but, um, 
Look. Not in London, everywhere. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> 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 <Good God. laughs> All right, and then the second movie that we're going to do watch is the Mar. Uh, uh, because Chris likes fucked up movies. I like David Cronenberg too. Another so. fucked up movie. Yeah, David Cronenberg. Oh, David Cronenberg's my boot, my boot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Crimes of the Future, starring, of course, Kristen Stewart. And all this bullshit about paying your dues. That's how you're gonna get a record deal. Blah, fucking blah. And he was right. Well, he fucking did it. What? That Frankenstein, crazy-looking motherfucker did it. Mercury fucking records. Mercury fucking records. They got signed? Yep. We're going to Hollywood in like an hour. I'm going to tell the rest of the girls. Get your little ass ready. That's from the... She plays Joan Jett in The Runaways. So that's what yeah. that's from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which then got me on... Uh, I went to go watch it on Hulu. And yeah. when I pulled up Hulu... Then uh, the show Pistols, yeah, which uh, I didn't even know was being made. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, Danny Boyle about made the Sex it. Pistols. It, yeah, it, uh, it, I'm already I'm three episodes in on it. Yeah, of course, of, of course. The the Ex Pistols, they uh, well, no one's there alive. Uh, like disavow it, but that's because they're probably speaking truth to power. <laughs> you know, on that like, yeah. like, yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Honest, Johnny Rotten isn't <laughs> John Lydon. <laughs> yeah, you didn't go by Rotten. He goes by John Lydon now, and he's a complete. Fucking dickhead now, like, like he, he's always been a complete dickhead, yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what you. Yeah. I don't know who you've been watching yeah, for yeah, the last yeah. forty years. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, the main actress in this movie is uh. I'll pronounce it for me. Leah Sadu. Sadu, thank you. I thought I was going to say Sadak. I know I was going to. But Leah Sadu. I promised myself I would never be hurt by that man again. I could have all contact. I didn't want anything to do with him or his sick life. And then, with his dying breath, he sends me you. Ironic, no? You shouldn't be so hard on him. The man I just met should have been dead weeks ago. The only reason his heart was still beating was you. I'll mourn my father in my own time, Mr. Bond. And now I'm going to bed. From Spectre. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's so many movies I could yeah. show from her. And and also, like, I just want to say this. Um, every dude with a heart on, you guys need to just chill the fuck out. Because, <laughs> like, I go to see pull, you know, uh, clips for her. And, of course, I get every, like, god dang freaking sex scene the woman yeah. has ever been in. Yeah. Like, 142 times yeah, yeah. before I can even find one where she's talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, in, uh, but, um, yeah, I will, I'll talk a little bit about that when the movie comes up about, about uh, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah. uh, Then, of course, the great, the wonderful, the man can talk in nine different languages, including Elvish, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vigor Manastron. Uh, Vigor Mortensen. That's what I said, Manastronian. I see in your eyes the same fear that would take the heart of me. A day may come. When the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day. An hour of wolves and shattered shields when the age of men comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day we fight. By all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand, men of the West. You guys don't know this, but I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> <From here. laughs> it's one of the best speeches of all time. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I mean, the last time we did a Vigo movie was uh, Green Book, and we didn't have the clips. Yet. No, we know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, I was like, yeah, we got to go straight for Lord of the Rings on that one. Yeah, you got And then Scott Speedman is another one of the main actors in this movie. I heard you say something to your wife about a, about a phone call. She called you, right? You didn't tell us about that. My partner's asking her about that right now. Wondering if she spoke to your daughter at that time. I guess if she didn't. But if she didn't, then where is she? She's laying down in the back of the cab. That's what she does. It's her little space. But don't kids stop taking afternoon naps when they're like three or four years old? I mean, if my dad's buying my favorite pie, I'm with him. I'm excited. Or I'm watching from the car window at least. Your business failed, right? Who 
was it TM Landscaping? You got bills piling up, you're about to go into bankruptcy, like I said before, I get it. I do, I get it. What the fuck are you talking about? Big money for lending your daughter to some Dementor pal for a few days, then she's gonna show up. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's from The Captive from 2014, starring Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. That was Ryan Reynolds as well. And I was yeah. like, how did the fuck did I not know this movie existed? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I actually watched part of that movie then. <laughs> when, <laughs> when I was going to the clips. Uh, but, yes, the movie that we're talking about is Crimes of the Future. Chris, tell everybody where we are going to be located at. You can find us online at moviesdontsuck.net. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash moviesdontsuckapodcast. We're on Twitter at NTS Podcast. We're on Instagram at NTS Podcast. We're on Twitch at NTS Podcast. Uh, and you can find us uh, shirt, small friday com search movies don't suck. And some that do, uh, we also have Patreon, Patreon slash movies don't suck. If you guys want to throw us a few shekels, and uh, wherever you find podcasts, where you can find podcasts, you can find movies that don't suck, and some that do. Really? Yeah. Like everywhere? Uh huh. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. So everywhere. who who are we talking about today? And if you got a small business, of course, we love to advertise your small business today. I am going to give you the business that started my day yesterday with my first sangria and then ended up into like drinking until four o'clock in the morning. That is El Rancho Grande Restaurant and Catina right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma on 1629 East 11th Street, a.k.a. Route 66, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 7. 7- Four one two zero. Now, El Rancho has been around since 1953. They began in the 1950s on Boulder between 6th and 7th. Uh, they they want you to come experience Tulsa's Tex-Mex tradition, celebrating more than 60 years on historic Route 66, where they're nestled, they're nestled between downtown and midtown, and they have everything. You name it. You you want to go there, get the margaritas, get the big bowl margaritas. Awesome. We had fajitas, uh, steak fajitas, and had just two beef tacos mm-hmm. and, and separated. Oh, man, it was so good. It's like we were in the mood for for Mexican food, and it was just like, man, this is the place. And plus, it's got the neon sign on Route 66. I mean, like, it's awesome. Yeah. It's just a family-owned place. It, they're not – on, on the weekdays, they close at, like, 8 o'clock. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> literally, it's a family-owned place. But if you're ever in Tulsa, Oklahoma, stop by El Rancho Grande Restaurant in Catana. That's at El Rancho Tulsa on Facebook. <sighs> oh, my God. I'm dead. I'm done already. I'm just done. I'm done for the day. You can take them. Go home now. You can put that. Okay. Um, can, yeah. can we go home now? We actually are at home already. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are. Yeah, I I, uh, I went to fucking Providence, Rhode Island for a wedding. Uh, it yeah. Was, yeah, Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful place, man. Like, um, we we, we uh, you got in like 1 a.m. on like Wednesday or Thursday, and um. I don't remember what day it was. <laughs> and, um, we got in. Uh, we uh, we it was stayed. Wednesday. Okay. Oh, it's okay. So uh, we uh, stayed at this restaurant. Uh, we stayed at this uh, hotel the first two nights called The Graduate, which is the oldest like um, hotel in Providence. And we were told that it's haunted, which I didn't notice because I was just fucking dead tired. Um, but um, <clears throat> next morning we walked around Providence. And if you guys don't know, uh, Providence is the one of the hometowns of H.P. Lovecraft. And so, mm-hmm. and so of course, we walked downtown. We had these four sites we're going to see. So we just, whenever we go, me and my wife go on occasion, like vacation, we spend fucking hours walking, right? So we had the whole afternoon to walk. And so we walked downtown. We walked, we went by this um, place that had a, a dedicated, like, mystical, magical H.G. Lovecraft shop. We went in there, and there's a lady there. Talking to, uh, sitting on the floor with the guy from London, uh, the owner of the shop, explained to nice. him, explained to him the nuances of H.P. Lovecraft's uh, racism. <laughs> yeah. and, oh wow! And uh, you know, like guys, it's really uh, H.P. Lovecraft is one of those people. He's he said some horrible shit, but he's such a progenitor of like cosmic literature and like uh, a permission of like how us as horror fans view the lens of stuff like that. That's it, you got you got separated somehow, right? Anyway, uh, we went down, walked through the Brown University campus, campus which is gorgeous. We tried to find a, a sculpture of a bear that wasn't there. That they tore down. Like it's a, it was this uh, outside sculpture of a bear lamp. Like, and we're like, cool. And 
uh, we went there and it's closed. Like it says closed on the thing. I had to, like, how do you close an outdoor sculpture? And they just fucking took it away. And then um, we walked wow. down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they, 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 so wait a minute. They they did they closed it down and yeah. they took the sculpture with them. Yeah, I guess so. I don't I don't know why, but it it was such a a Providence fixture that in our uh, hotel room, uh, the lamp in it is shaped like that bear. <laughs> you know, we're like. Interesting. Yeah. And then, of course, we went back to H.P. Lovecraft's house, which is weird because all the house in there is so old that uh, yeah. on the front they had the plaque of, like, the merchant or shipmaker that owned it uh, or, or, you know, who's famous for building it. And H.P. Lovecraft's house does say, not say anything about H.P. Lovecraft at all. So, and, um, and, uh, and someone lives there. So we went by this regular-ass house that H.P. Lovecraft did. They didn't, like, you have a Cthulhu in the window. They didn't even say it's lived there. It was just... It's just someone's house. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and Jeez. then we, yeah, but the, walking downtown, it's it's a beautiful city. It's a very beautiful city, and I'd recommend it. And then, uh, of course, we went to Salem the last day, we, full day we had there. And that's a whole lot more touristy than I expected. But it was the Satanic Temple. Yeah, that, that you sent me pictures of that, and I was just like, "What the? What? what, what what's going on? Yeah, it's Christians in Massachusetts. Doing Satanism? I, I, we, dude, we we both are kind of Satanists. If you after seeing Hail Satan, we were walked out and we we're like, "I guess we're Satanists. I like, guess that's what we are." I, I, I you know, um, I'm not gonna deny or confirm or nor deny. Okay, confirm any of that, uh, due to the fact that places I work for might fire me. Well, no, like, um, uh, mm. just just confirm that you're not a theistic Satan. <laughs> that you don't actually. Mm, okay, I don't know who you are. Hail Satan. And I might have to. <laughs> hell, hell, whatever. Uh, right. <laughs> um, I forgot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's get into the first movie. Let's get into your creepy movies that you made me watch. Oh, or, or are you moving on? Okay, yeah. Um, we're talking about Alex Garland's Men. Alex Garland's in the last couple of years, he's been become someone to kind of watch when it comes to directing. He uh, wrote, he wrote Twenty One Days Later, so mm-hmm. or Twenty Eight Days Later, but he also uh, directed. What about Twenty Eight Weeks Later? He did not do that. Twenty Eight Days Later sucked. Twenty Eight Weeks Later was the good one. Wait, you, you, you. You, like to, I mean, they're, I think they're both good, but twenty days later. I'm just kidding. Hard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you never continue. Do you like both those, or do you just like twenty days? Yeah, later? I like both of them. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. Yeah, okay, so uh, you also uh, wrote and directed Ex Machina from 2014. I mean, we both liked him. One of the first movies I saw with my wife, um, and then uh, Annihilation from 2018, another weird fucked up movie. And Alex Garland's back with Men. Uh, A24 released it, of course. Because uh, mm-hmm. they seem to put out good shit lately. This stars Jesse Buckley as Harper. I have to say, Mr. Sneed, I'm disappointed. Uh, Rory Kinnear as Jeffrey and, like, every other dude in this movie. Okay, I will. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. If you give me a blowjob. Uh, Papal Esadu as James. Finn had created a parallel business for himself. This is stars Gail Rankin as Riley, Sarah Toomey as police officer Frida, Zach Rothera Oxley as Samuel, and Sonia Mizuno as a police operator. And why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for this one? There's a storyline? Yeah, just one, one sentence, very short. Oh, it looks like, yeah. A young woman goes on a solo vacation to English countryside following the death of her ex husband. Yeah, that's. Uh, I guess a way to put it. <laughs> um, That's a way to put it, huh? Yeah. Uh, there is a whole lot more that goes on in this movie, but a lot of it doesn't have dialogue. It's like there's like a lot of just of her walking around looking sad. <laughs> but um, uh, both you and I will have Jesse Buckley, right? Mm-hmm. The, and, yeah. And she's uh, originally a reality star from the U.S. or from the U.K. Um, Which we ju- I just now found out. Yeah, and out. Neil, Neil informed me. I'm like, shit, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that because I was just looking for clips of her, and uh, as soon as I put in Jesse Buckley, it says I think it's called "I'll Do Anything," which was basically like um, like America's Got Talent mixed because you have to act, sing, and and you know uh, dance. Mm-hmm. So like it's like all the reality shows put together. Mm-hmm. So when did you see this movie? last seven days yeah okay that's good um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm not gonna tell you so uh, i don't remember how full was the theater um 
I think this one, there's, yeah, there's only like two other couples. Yeah, same I think here. there's two couples. It's only me and like two couples. Yeah, yeah same here. Uh, this is a real fucked up movie. Like, to, to put it in a lightweight. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, 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 have I not this whole time said that this whole episode is all your fucked up weird fantasies that you've had fantasies. your entire life? Fantasies. I don't fantasies, but... Uh, but, yeah, this is this is all you, bro. This is all your loving stuff. Uh, yeah, this is this was right at my alley. <laughs> Just so you know, both these movies were right at my alley. Uh, so, men, it is a uh, it's it's trying to say something, uh, <laughs> and it it mostly succeeds. I think it mostly succeeds. In the- yeah. Okay. Basically, um, l- let me give you the full of this without spoiling it. Uh, every man that Jesse Buckley's character uh, walks into or runs into during his whole entire is another reflection of a negative uh, response of, of how men control women. Yep. Everything from um, over masculinity to um, making them feel like they're you know below them by oh I need to help them I need yeah. to, I need to help you because you're a female mm-hmm. you you can't make decisions because you're a woman mm-hmm. you know um it, it shows a lot of the toxic masculinity of yeah, what this uh, is how male all about toxic society. masculinity yeah that's yeah that's, and um basically uh Rory plays all of those people mm-hmm. yeah he plays all every- of the negative people everybody from the evil preacher dude to the butt naked guy yeah. that wrote, shows up at one point and I mean there's some penises and yeah, some yeah. vaginas yeah, and yeah. some weird stuff yeah. I don't know what uh, this is not a movie for the kids oh uh, no uh, not, 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 not a movie for kids this is for people with um, that want to look at a, a weird horrific creepy art piece that has something to say but it's going to use um, anthologies and disgusting moments that you're going to be confused in your head <laughs> until you think about it afterwards. Yeah, uh this is uh yeah, it's 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 definitely disturbing at points. Um no doing there. I do want to uh apply to Roy Kinnear for playing like five different characters. Um Yeah, and, yeah. and, and like at first I didn't I yeah, didn't realize I it didn't was either. Him. I didn't know it till the fucking end. And now it makes Really? Sense. Yeah, and it, at the end when I no. saw Roy Kinnear, all those characters I'm like that makes sense now. Like like not not yeah. But the only thing, I, the only way I was kind of like, eh, is when you played the kid, the little kid, and I'm like, the ED agent kind of weird. <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was up with a kid at first because I'm sitting there in the theater, I'm looking at him, and I'm just like, look at, I was like, okay, did they just get like a really weird looking, you know, short person? Yeah, or, I, 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 I was like, like that like, kid's not obviously he's not 15. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like, but uh, yeah, um, this movie is fucked up. It's creepy. Um, Jesse Buckley is amazing in it. Roy Kinnear is amazing in it. Even Papa Esadu is pretty great in this. And it's, you got to go in this, I guess, with an open mind. This is not a movie for boomers. Like like both the movies we saw today, I would not recommend to my wife's parents or mine. No, know? no, 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 no. I would definitely not. Uh, I would definitely not. <laughs> no, my parents would not want to watch uh yeah, I would, my parents would not want to watch this movie. I, I don't think there's many people. In the, I mean, like, maybe my in-laws. The, the, I think, the, the, they, the would still, is, they, the I think is, they would still be like, eh, maybe not. You and I love movies, <laughs> so we watch movies like this because we think they're great movies. All or the, the time. Interesting. So, uh, all the time. Yeah. The, the, yeah, this is um, this is all metaphorical. Um, and it's it's definitely not one to pass up. But uh, I had a little bit of problems with the ending, but that's that's that I'm nitpicking. If I do that, this movie is crazy, it, and it's um, it's it, it kept me captivated the whole time. It, yeah, I mean, by any means, uh, it does have slow parts. Like uh, the fact I have across the screen right now, guys, mm-hmm. is that the movie contains 17 minutes where no one says a single word. Yeah, except for the main character Harper says like "fuck" twice. Yeah, yeah, mutters it under breath. Yeah, yeah. And, like, literally, it did not bore me. I wasn't like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is not saying anything anytime soon. What? What? what why is nobody saying it? Like, it was because of the way they shot it. Uh, like, so I, I, I think I know it's... Shot. Yeah, yeah. It, it was very beautifully well done. And uh, I think they did a really good job. I think they tried their dangness. 
Yeah. So, uh, men, um, it's fucked up. Uh, you will come in not knowing what to expect, and by the end you'll be like, "What the fuck did I just watch?" And um, yeah, uh, I think I think you and I may have both said, muttered that walking out of both these movies. What the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, uh, the next one we'll get to is uh, they made a very big overage of some people walked out of the movie at the cans. Yeah, yeah, they made it. Yeah, all I don't know if that, they yeah. actually did or not. Well, you can definitely. You know. There's some parts where people would be like, "Fuck this movie, <laughs> this is yeah, not just sleep." I mean, it, but it's cans. It's yeah, not yeah. like it's like audiences are running out of there. Like, oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah. so but, uh, um, oh shoot, I just noticed something. What's that, dude? I don't have my. Notebook, it's out in the. Oh, yeah, you can, I can <laughs> Let me go back real quick. So, Min, uh, like I said, uh, Rory Kinnear plays all these different people. Jesse Buckley is great. And um, I I do recommend this, but if you're just like a person who exclusively watches Marvel films, this is not a movie for you, or maybe it'll be a gateway to a movie for you because it's really fucked up. But I do recommend it. Uh, Min, directed by Alex Garland. If you guys haven't seen these other movies, Ex Machina or Annihilation. I definitely recommend check those out and then check these out because this movie, this episode, especially today, is director heavy on directors that I appreciate and admire. It Alex Garland was one of those directors to best. I mean, me. keep your eye out. I preferred it. I preferred it when it was Charlie Sheen, and I'm not a fan of when Aston Kutcher took over. Oh yeah, I mean, me too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, not two and a half men. This is just men. Oh, it's yeah. just men, yeah. not two and a half men. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to Google this thing because you just look at men and you get like, a, a, you know. Billion. Oh, my God, you get so many penises. <laughs> yeah, you get trillions of uh, hits. Dude, penises. you know how many penises I've seen this week? Because every time I try to get up to get facts, because you try to put in men movie. And, yeah, how you many, know, there's many, a whole lot of men in movies. How did you? How many penises did you see? Like a lot, dude. Okay. More, than a, more than a co room growing up? Hey, we're not talking about the first episode of Boys, but <laughs> have you seen the new season of Boys? Not, not yet. Is it is it insane? All right, I don't care. This is a spoiler. I'm going to spoil it for everybody. Everybody, this is a spoiler right now for for Boys season uh, season four episode one first five minutes. There's a character named the Termite that is a gay character. Him and his lover are about to do blow and do some sex. And he goes, I want to, I want you inside of me. And the termite shrinks down to this small <laughs> and goes inside his pee hole. Yes. And they show it and they show it in full detail. It's just the most disturbing. It's been living in my head for like three days now, dude. <laughs> I can't get it out. Like last night, I was trying to describe this at the bar to someone that's never seen the show. And they're just like looking at me like I'm weird. I go, no, this is a number one show on Amazon Prime right now. It's not me being a weirdo or some random thing. But anyway, let's do some quotes and uh, get the rating on this. Sure. Uh, there ain't many quotes, be honest, because there were not a lot of words. So, um, is that an apple for the garden? You must not do that. Forbidden fruit and all, you know. <laughs> Did you know elephants are the only animals that can't jump? I didn't know that. Did you know that? Don't say. No, I didn't know that either until <laughs> I looked it up after the movie. Uh, don't say please to me when I'm already pleading. What are you trying to hide from me? It's my phone. I'm not trying to hide anything. <laughs> It was that, James, your way, your plan to win me back. You want to play a game called hide and seek? Why don't you just fuck off, you front? At first, I threw them at. You were praying, but now you are just tormented. Come on, Jeffrey. Fire up the engines. You have the exact qualities of a failed military man. When did you lose your virginity? I've been thinking about it since I met you. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I just, I just randomly want to meet somebody and just like a week later, meet, run into him again, and be like, "Hey, um, when did you lose your virginity?" Yeah, I'll, I've been I'll, thinking about that ever since we met. Yeah, well, just tell me. It's cool, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, man, whatever. And you were singing to me, but not as Ulysses, but as a sailor. Uh, all right, Chris, give me your score. Let's let's hear it. My score. This is got? it's not perfect, but it's definitely something worth watching. It's a three point mm-hmm. nine for me. I I I thought it was a little bit. I was I was really confounded walking out of this movie, and uh, I I mostly liked it, but uh, but like when it comes to like him being like, I I, I think I would liked it more if a woman made it. I feel like you know I I know what I was trying to say, you know, and I liked I liked most of it, but it, I was a bit confounded walking out of the movie. But it's it's a good one, and I recommend it for people who like fucked up movies. And this is yeah. fucked up, yeah. Um, three point nine. This is a fucked up movie. Um, I'm going to go a little lower than you on this one because to us, I got the concept. I got the the ideology about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe explain it just a little bit better. Mm. Especially, I understand there's a very grotesque part. I understand kind of what he was showing there. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I do think he, like, even for people who think it's ambiguous, I think it's a little too on the nose, even. You know, like, like I get it. Mm-hmm. I get yeah. it. <laughs> you know, I get yeah, it. I get it. I got your idea, bro. Yeah. I got your idea. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to go 3.6 for me. Uh, I just, I want, it, it was cool. It was creepy. It wasn't like, and it, by any means, it wasn't long breathed in any two spots. I yeah, think it, it, it all is, flowed really yeah, well. Yeah. It, it came together great, but um, I don't know. There's something about it to just like. I feel like I feel like um, this director is going somewhere. I loved you know Ex Machina, and I loved uh, Annihilation, mm-hmm. and this one just didn't do it for me. But I feel like he's on the cusp of something, you know. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to his next movie. Uh, your face. But men, uh, so uh, I'm Rotten Tomatoes. We think the audience score in this movie is there's also audience and a critic consensus on this. One. Audience score is going to be it's going to be weird because of how this movie's weird. So I'm going to say it's going to be like 58, percent 40. percent Oh my god! I didn't know look at that uh, low. Audience says men might satisfy film fans comfortable with a lot of ambiguity and heavy symbolism, but for many others, it'll be hard to see the point. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, now what is the critics' consensus on this movie? Seventy-one, sixty-nine. I, I was close. You, you were off. You, you, you were close. Uh, critics' consensus. <laughs> critics' consensus is: if it's narrative and thematic reach, sometimes it's easy to grasp. Magnetic performances from the stellar cast help men make the most of horror provocations. So, that's men. That's we did that. Men, 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 men. I saw this. I saw this with my wife, and she was on board till the end. She was like, "Men." Do you like that movie? Do you like that show, Men Two and a Half Men? Did you watch it? Were you a fan of that show? I mean, I've seen a couple episodes. I'm not. I'm not. It was. It's hard for me to watch anything with John Cryer in it. Oh. Is it just because he was Ducky? He was Ducky, right? I think mm-hmm. it was. And you hate Ducky for some reason? No, wait. Did people call you Ducky growing up? Oh, mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. So you have just like, you're like, why did you do this to me, John Cryer? <laughs> why did you do this to me, John Cryer? So I don't, I don't see it so John much Cryer. now, but I do see, I've seen pictures of you younger, and I can mm-hmm. see why people said that. But yeah, it's not I something it. I would have said, just so you know. Mm hmm. You would have said I was the look like the lead singer of Incubus. Oh, uh, Brandon Boyd. You that was, Brandon? Yeah, that's the other one. Okay, it was Incub- lead singer Incubus, John Cryer, and uh, what was the other guy that I got? Uh, oh, John Cusack back in the day. I can see John Cusack too, but um, you know, people say a lot, a lot like my brother, and vice versa. Well, you're twins. I you know. Dumbass. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Woo! You're such a jackass. You just right, like that? Like, you're like, okay. Yeah. Let's get to the new segment. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Movies Don't Suck and Some of the News. I read some stuff. Chris, he'd never heard of it. And if he did, he just shuts up while I talk. 
And sometimes I interrupt you, but I'm trying my best not to do that today. I swear to God. So. You're, you're failing miserably. <laughs> miserably. <laughs> do you like video games? I do. Do you like violent video games? Uh, those are sometimes the best. Do you like do you like groups of people in karate geese that fight in California with animals on their geese? I'm uh, sure. <laughs> the creators of Cobra Kai is now getting the reins of Duke Nukem. Wait, the movie? They're making a Duke Nukem movie? Finally? Violent video game franchise Duke Nukem has had a number of false starts over the years, mm-hmm. but it has once again is being developed for the big screen. Legendary Entertainment has picked it up, as uh, reported by the Holiday Reporter. Uh, Josh Held, John Hertz, and Hayden Skullsberg, who created the recent series of Cobra Kai, are signed up to produce and create this franchise. Did you play Duke Nukem growing up? I, you know, I've played a couple of times. Yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say it was like a hardcore game that I was yeah, like. I, I play oh, a little, all about that. I played a little bit Duke Nukem, and, then, and like, I know they've been trying to bring it back for a while, but like, it just it it, it went through so much like legal bullshit, and it, people lost interest, including me. So, but and there is already a petition. To get one individual, and nobody will accept anybody else but this one person to play Duke Nukem. John Cena. John Cena! Bam, bam, bam. How'd you guess that? Right I, guess, I, back, just, huh? I just guessed it, dude. So I was thinking about who would be a great Duke Nukem, and I thought about what Duke Nukem it's looked at. John up. Cena, all day long. By the way, did you see what, see what John Cena did recently? Uh, that was great. Well, the- that he, the, what the so, Ukraine? So there's this uh, non-verbal uh, kid with Down syndrome, and uh, who had to leave Ukraine mm-hmm. in Liverpool, and um, and he he didn't understand why he had to left, and his parents said it's because you meet John Cena, and then John Cena flew down. No, no, no. It's because we're uh, gonna go. We're gonna get go be safe by your superhero, okay. John Cena. Yeah, and he showed yeah, up. Yeah. And John Cena was fucking there, and. It, no, was, well, well, he heard of the story, uh-huh. and then like a week later, he paid for his like he literally went and bought a ticket right then and there, and flew out there with a like a suitcase full of stuff. They believe me, they did a whole thing on WWE on SmackDown uh, this past Friday. Okay. They did a whole video package and all that stuff where they they you know got together because I mean if you're gonna right now especially they have a few wrestlers that have done some negative stuff. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> mean. To show what John Cena does, which John Cena is just a good dude. He's just an angel I mean, man. He's I, an angel of a man. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's he's fulfilled more uh, make-a-wishes than any individual. Oh, yeah? That's awesome. Entire, yeah. He is he is awesome, man. So, yeah. I wish John awesome. Cena was my uncle. I really do. <laughs> right? I wish John Cena was just a dude I hung out with, like, once a year. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, man, what's going on? Yeah, Tell yeah, me what's yeah, going yeah. on in your life, bro. <laughs> Uh, Sleepy Hollow is getting a reboot in the works at Paramount. Lindsay Beard is going to write and direct. Um, so I, I'm a pretty big fan of the Tim Sleepy. Burton one, so I don't know. I'm a fan of the Tim Burton one. I'm a fan of the TV show that was out yeah, yeah, for yeah, a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's one of those legends that I'm just a, you know, whatever. Are they redoing give, give the, like, the Disney cartoon? Is that what they're redoing? Because there's a Disney version. Uh, it looks like they're doing, like... It looks like they're basing this off of the film because it because oh keeps God. on talking about the Tim Burton film, the Liberties, Tim Burton, uh, you know. Yeah, it's just saying that it's going off of, like, doing kind of a new movie series. Yeah, after being in New so, England. Hey, I'm down. Yeah, after being in New England for, like, a week and a half, I'm all about seeing it. Yeah, right. Uh, the Thunderbolts is going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Do you know who the Thunderbolts are? No, you don't. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell me. All right. The Thunderbolts is basically um, what Marvel, uh, what DC ripped off to make the Suicide Squad. The Thunderbolts were first. 
and it's a bunch of criminals that become that are superheroes that are being watched by superheroes. So, like, what you know, name some of the uh, villains in in the Thunderbolts? Um, Black Widow was one of them. Uh, gosh, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think of everybody. Uh, Red Hulk, uh, Baron Zemo, Taskmaster, Ghost, uh, Deadpool, uh, the Punisher, Winter Soldier. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, like people, yeah. basically everybody that, you know, hey, we didn't, we don't have a big story for you anymore. Yeah. The world. So we're just going to throw you in the, the, this here with everybody. And um, they've already been, they've been teasing this the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Julia, uh, Julia Lewis Dreyfus, that's been popping up mm-hmm. in TV shows and stuff. She's the one putting the Thunderbolts together. So okay. U.S. agent. Uh, or the guy that used to be Captain America, mm-hmm. you know, he's one of them. Like, so she's putting them all together. And they're called the Thunderbolts because they're named after uh, Senator Colonel, whatever his name is at this point, uh, Ross, <laughs> Thunder, uh, Thunderbolt Ross, yes. who's uh, Betsy Ross's father that's yeah. always chasing the Hulk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's why they're called the Thunderbolts. And, um, so I can't wait. I can't wait to see that. I'm, I'm very excited. I like things where it takes the bad guy. Yeah, so now, are you ready the, for this? This the, is going to make you happy. Okay, I'm ready for it. Everything, everywhere, all at once uh-huh. is now A24's highest grossing movie of all time. Fuck yes. I, I mean, yeah, this has been my favorite movie the past three years, maybe. Everyone needs to see everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm-hmm. It needs to be everywhere. And then easy to watch all the time. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this. It is, it is just past one hundred and eighty million dollars, so Good. it made all its money back because they only paid. Uh, they only paid uh, how much altogether? They paid uh, three million to make the movie. Real? Yeah. So that seems like a cheap movie. Man. Yeah. So way to go, them. Yeah. Huh? That's a cheap movie to make. <laughs> I mean, it's eight twenty four, dude. They don't. They don't. They don't make high quality films. You know that. <laughs> They must. I think this. Uh, Angela Jolie. Mm-hmm. Okay, can say that again. Uh, I was saying, H twenty four must sprinkle their so their film stock with like 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 some sort of movie making dust to make it uh, do do what it does so well. So. Mm-hmm. What well, Angela Jolie? Angela Jolie as is going to be right is writing and directing a new thriller called Without Blood, which will be. Her teaming up with Selma Hayek, mm-hmm. who, you know, they did Eternals together without yeah. blood, is to explore uh, universal truths about war, drama, um, memory, and healing. It is based on the novel, the same name by Italian author Alessandro Parcia, uh, which is set in the aftermath of an unspecific war. So without that blood. sounds cool. Yeah, sure. I'll watch that. Yeah, I mean, it's Angela Jolie and Selma Hayek. What yeah. more do I can need? Yeah, they're they're both so beautiful. So, Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel is going to be taking the action back to the island of Manhattan. Okay, it I, is said at the at the end of Ghostbusters Afterlife, the Echo One is driving into Manhattan, returning to its home. And before anyone ever heard the the title Afterlife, we called it. Rust City, which would not have made sense to anyone until they saw the movie. The code name for the next movie is Firehouse. I'm excited for this. I hope it's. I, I mean, I, I'm all about bringing back Ghostbusters. Honestly, it was such. A, I love Ghostbusters. Afterlife was so fun. I can't wait for another fun adventure. So. Mm-hmm. 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 Remember the movie Becky? Yeah, I remember Becky uh, with a. Uh, with Kevin James? Yeah, Kevin James. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Becky 2 has just been announced. With Lula Wilson, the real sequel adds Sean William Scott to the to oh, so, the movie. So they bring another like, Nazi back, back to Becky? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. It just says the Unstoppable Becky will return in the sequel Becky, Becky 2, The Wrath of Becky. It has now been announced, introduced in, in 2020. Becky follows young actress Lou Wilson as the title character, little girl who is forced to fight against a gang of neo-Nazis. Um, sure. All right. All right. You know? Yeah. I, I don't even know 
how they're going to throw that all together. Again, yeah. But. I mean, like, at the time. Sure. You, know, oh. the, you know what's funny? At the time Becky came out, it wasn't a huge concern. But now with this Becky, it will be. Yeah, neo Nazis are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're yeah. called Trump supporters, whatever you yeah, want to call yeah. it. But, um. <laughs> yeah. Seth Rogen's. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. movie will be the star of a franchise. The start of a franchise. They're going full out with it now. Okay. I mean, I mean, I grew up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I, the ones now I don't connect with. Yeah. Way that... So basically, this is going to be the start of a whole series. Okay. Uh, the first movie is animated and it goes back to the roots of the turtle set and is producing partner Evan Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Our brilliant choice is because no one can tell stories about being teenagers better than those guys. That's true. That's true. They're passionate and super nerdy about the turtles. It is going to work for kids, parents, Gen Zers, and millennials. We have plans to do multiple animated movies this way, but one day we might go back to a hybrid live action version of the Ninja Turtles. I mean, as long as Craig's in it, I'm kind of. I'm kind of interested. So, um, oh man, I love Crane. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Crane. Yeah, me too. I'm a big fan of Crane. Um, are you gonna sneeze? Are you not? You're yawning. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're we're it's early, guys. So we're, no, we're, no, it was a sneeze, but I caught I caught it. I was gonna sneeze right in the microphone. Everybody's gonna hear, it, but no, I caught it. You got a mute button. Yeah, mute button on there though. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, sorry. I'm going to smack your face. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Julie Gardner from uh, Famous for Ozarks and oh, what was that other show that she just did? She did Ozarks and she that one was like, why are you just so poor? What was that movie show? I don't know. Uh, whatever. It was right. advertised on Netflix a lot. Okay. I watched like uh, half of it. Anyway, <laughs> like uh, she, a- Julie Gardner has been, uh, just been uh, added and she is going to be playing Madonna in an upcoming biopic film. Okay, yeah, I'll watch that. I mean, sure. Mm-hmm. Or is, uh, as Larry King called People her, that... Madonna. What? Larry King called Madonna, Madonna. You make fun of Madonna. No, I'm not calling you at all. I'm talking about Larry King. You're not Larry King, are you? Why, why are you calling him Madonna? That's what Larry King called Madonna. No, what? Fine. Really? Yeah, he was like, Madonna. He's and he called, and called, and called so her son, Lord, or, 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 or uh, her child, Lords, when it's Lords, but yeah. All right, what? Mm-hmm. You try, mm-hmm. you sit Apple confirms deal with Brad Pitt for a Formula One movie. Okay, yeah, I heard about The that. film will be held by Top Gun director Joseph uh, Kowinski. Are you a Formula One guy? No, I, I'm not a race guy at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I was a... Uh, I got... I got, I got well, why would I... Uh, Kevin Foggy is looking for a good director to direct the upcoming Fantastic Four movie because he wants to be hands off. He doesn't want to yeah, really yeah. be just, hardcore involved in it. Just, just, just do it. To yeah, just come do, do it. it for him. Yeah, that's fair. I, 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 uh, I hear that. The uh, Neff Campbell has exited Scream. They could not come to terms on how much money that she wanted to be paid, and so she has now exited the franchise. I'm of the opinion they shouldn't made a new scream at all, but you know that's just me. Huh. Uh, they should have killed her a long time ago. Bro. Oh yeah, you think like second film maybe? Maybe like the third film, but I don't know, man. All right, all right. Yeah. It's 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 a little much now. <laughs> Uma Thurman, Henry Golding join Charlize Theron in the new The Old Guard Two. Hey, we saw that movie, <laughs> the first one. The, the, the first one, yes, yeah. but now we got like a bunch of people. Um, man, I can't wait for that because you got the installments bringing back the original cast Kiki Lane, Matthias Schamatis, Maureen Ginzar, Lucha Menrelia, uh, Veronica Nogo, and Chatal Tati Al Javaro. And that's <laughs> from the comic book. Yeah, and it was like Rimmel Ding Dong, but, um, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, Dudley won't be in this one. I'm all the above it. Okay. And last but not least, the Joker two has a name. Yeah, I don't know about this man. I I don't think it should be made. I'm I'm against it. I really am. I'm gonna see it. 
because we had to see for the show, but I don't, I don't think this should be made. Okay, but the name of it is Joker Flo Diao, a reference to a medical term for a mental disorder that affects two or more individuals. So there's yeah. a second Joker. Joker Flo A.D. Flo A.D. It's the son of Joker. Flo A.D. <laughs> Joker Flo A.D. So are you, are, you, are you, I mean, you want to see it, right? I mean, that, mm, I, I mean, yeah, I guess when I, I mean, they, they can't fuck them up any more than they already have. Damn. Damn! Shots fired. I mean, <laughs> at this point, you're just going to keep fucking up Joker. Shots fired. Do you fired. not understand the concept of Joker? No, you got to come up with some dumb shit that has nothing to do with what the real Joker is about. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, do you, yeah. and I, I do think it's weird that a lot of people took this Joker as like some sort of like like icon to strive for. <laughs> you know, like, like um, I saw this tweet that said, uh, male birth control is real and is having the Joker as your profile photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get done. Let's get this final movie out of the way. That was the movies don't suck and some of them news. I read chick. Chris liked it. And then he touched me in my no-no spot. I did. And it was uh, glorious. Thanks for sharing that with me. Huh? Hey, you know, people can't see what's going on in the video. You know, oh, yeah. they can't. They can't hear what we're doing. All right. <laughs> Crimes of the Future, directed by David Cronenberg. You know David Cronenberg. Do you like David Cronenberg? Do you like Scanner? Do you uh-huh. like Video Drum? Do you like To Fly? Do you like Dead Ringers? Do you like Existence? Do you like Crash from 1996? Well, he's back with his first uh, original written film in 11 years, uh, Crimes of the Future. Uh, and this is actually his return to body horror films. But uh, I, mm-hmm. I get that. Leah, Leah Sadu plays Caprice. I promised myself I would never be hurt by that man. I... And it also, this also stars Kristen Stewart as Timlin. All this bullshit about paying your dues. Uh, Vigo Mortensen as Saul Tenser. I see in your eyes the same fear that would take the heart of me. Also, Scott Speedman. As Lang Dotris. I heard you say something to your wife about a about a phone call. This also is Tanya Beatty as Burst. Lynn Lee Kornoski as Juna. Uh, Dennis Capezzi as Odile. Don McKellar as Whippet, who I loved Whippet. And uh, Yorgos uh, Pierre Pospolis as Dr. Ness Sater. Uh, why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for this thing? That is a storyline? Yeah, it's a long one. Really? Mm-hmm. How big is it? Is it huge? Uh, it's like I don't know, ginormous. Eight or nine sentences, maybe. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah. All right. It sounds just as actors taking a deep dive into the not so distant future, in which humankind is learning to adapt to its synthetic surroundings. This elevation moves humans beyond their natural state and into a metamorphosis, which alters their bio- bio- biology makeup. With while some embrace the limitless potential of transhumanism, others attempt to police it. Either way, accelerated ele- elevation syndrome is spreading fast. Sal Tensher is a beloved performance artist who has embraced this new state, sprouting new and un- unexpected organs in his body. Along with his partner, Caprice, Tensor has turned the... Re- removal of these organs into a spectacle of his loyal followers to marvel at in real time theater. But with both the government and a strange subculture taking note, Tensher is forced to consider what would be the most shocking performance of all. So this takes place in a future that I guess doesn't have the internet. Um doesn't have computers. This is a uh, this They're is computers. I guess like biological computers, right? Like, yeah, I guess you're right. It's um, it's a very fucking weird movie, and it, I didn't expect anything less from David Cronenberg. Of course, it's a real weird movie. I know that uh, people walked out of it cans because David Cronenberg he does these really fucked up visceral um body horror effects. You know, like people would be like, "Well, this is gross. I'm not staying." <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh. I liked this movie. It took me a while. I walked out, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, this movie's—it's almost awesome." 
it's almost awesome movie, but it's it's not quite there. I liked it a lot though. It's it it makes you think. It's one of those movies that you sort of think about afterwards. What would you do in this situation? And uh, Dave Cronenberg, hey, thanks, man. You're you're still making very fucked up movies. You there? Oh no, I'm listening. I'm just listening to what, what you gotta say. <laughs> uh, it's it it takes place in a, in a time that I guess the future, but it's like an alternate timeline. I don't see this ever, um, ever uh, turning into what the future would look like. It's just someone's view. Uh, everything's dirty. Everything's gross. Everything's it's dark all the time. There's no sunlight, and uh, and it's. I I liked it though. I I I thought that Vigo was great. Uh, I thought Lee was great. I thought Kristen was great. Um, and you know, I, I the only problem I had with Kristen's performance is she did what she did a lot during Twilight, which is brood. You know, looking sad and kind of weird and like like. Like it, well, I mean, her character was supposed to be creepy. Yeah, yeah. And her, she played creepy. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, by, mean, by the way, I wouldn't say it's anti-sex, even though there's a lot of sex in this movie. It's very, or quote-unquote sex. It's not sexy at all. It's fucking crazy and weird. You know, that's your opinion, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like, you yeah. can't, that, that's like saying, hey, that outfit looks sexy, but you don't like it, so therefore it must not be well, sexy. I thought the director was that, trying to make very it. close minded of you, sir. No, I would uh, not think of you to be that way. No, what? Well, like, uh, seriously, just because you're not into something doesn't mean it's not sexy. I'm sorry. You're right. It's you're, just weird. You're right. Yeah, I think uh, surgery is very sexy. Uh, <laughs> it, it is to some people. I mean, how many times? I mean, you literally live in a city that has a huge S and M BDSM freaking group that meets up like every Saturday to do shows where people get needles and beaten and like right in front of you. Okay, you're like you're, you're right. literally at one of their shows with me recently. <laughs> like, and I was wincing the whole time. <laughs> I was like, oh. like so. You, whatever you, your preference is, man. We're sorry that not all people in the world uh, are uh, a wimp. Like you, I guess wimpy is what you'd say. You're because you're wimpy. You can't take the surgery stuff. No, I watched this movie. Uh, open eyes. All right, I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And were you turned on? I'm not. I'm not saying yes or no to some of it, but um, <laughs> I think you were very turned on. I mean, how can you see Vigo and not be turned That's on? That's true. You're right about that. Uh, but um, all right. Let's let's jump into this. Um, I mean, you already did for the last ten minutes, but uh, let's uh, now let's this movie <laughs> is. You guys should see Neil. He's like trying to put the words to this thing. He's like, yeah, <laughs> this movie about this. Times of the Future, directed by David Kronenberg. All, right. All right. I want some more explanations. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know where the little box carrying case or whatever, the, the thing that they use for the art, that her, what they call her paintbrush, uh-huh. the, the little box that the, they it's do the surgeries little, in. It's not little, people, yeah. Yeah, well, whatever, it's little. It's uh-huh. only got two people in it. Um, and I want to see where that originated from. Whatever that weird chair was, I don't even know what that was. Like, I understand what it was, yeah, wait, what dude. its purpose was. But why does everything look like it came from, like, a flesh monster it, it or was something a, like a lot, that? A lot of it has a lot alien, like, sort of like, like you know. like Yeah, a, and not once did anybody talk about aliens. No, but I... I mean, that's Cronenberg. He didn't explain it. He didn't have to explain a whole lot, you know? Mm, you got to explain a little bit more so, than what he did there. Okay. But. So you're saying you need more world building is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's another thing. We never saw the world. No. We, we just, saw buildings. We saw individual buildings that people were walking in. But never once did we see a street streetscape. Never once did we see, like, a, like a big overview of what the world looks like then and there. And I know that's a big money shot. I get it. Those are, you know, it spins. Are, are you okay on that side, bro? Yeah, yeah I'm you're sorry. Like, you're, you just, your whole room just went, like, really dark. And then on top of that, like, it's just weird. I don't know. I don't know why your, your camera just like adjusted to make it really dark in here. That's weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. Keep lights on in there, bro. Anyway, um, 
this movie was awesome because it completely, as again, this was a gross out movie to get another fact across to you. Yeah, yeah, just 100%. like men. Yeah, yeah, men, men gave you, you know, hey, uh, um, men are chauvinist fucking pigs. Yeah, men are awful pieces people. of shits. Yeah, which is true. Yeah, uh, especially if they're white. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and uh, I know who's talking. We, we're both white men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I can I can say that about my own people, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to claim them though. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, uh, the crimes of the future is talking about uh, basically as much as the grossness of all of it is, uh, the surgeries and all this stuff. All that is is just a big hoorah to tell you, hey, we're fucking up the planet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, literally, literally, that's what this whole movie, bottom line is, hey, we're fucking up the planet. I'm not going to tell you how it gets to that, but it literally is, if you watch this whole movie and you don't get at the end when the credits hit, oh, man, we're fucking up this planet. <laughs> and it's like, going to fuck us up. You know, like, yeah. We, yeah, we yeah. We we're don't. fucking up the planet so bad that sooner or later the planet's going to fight back. Um, this is beautifully well done. Every actor did uh, their part. Um, it's it's disturbing. It's uh, artfully mm-hmm. shot, and I, there's stuff that will not leave my mind for a long time in this movie. You know? Yeah, and the whole thing with Vigo being the lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, I think I had a fact here where uh, he didn't want to play the lead originally, but uh, the director just basically said, hey, look, dude. Either you're going to play the lead or I'm not doing this freaking movie at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it got to that point. Uh, Cornbury had, now, a, had, a, uh, had a dream lead, Vigo. Vigo was like, I'll play Whip It. He's like, no, you're not playing Whip It. You're playing. No, no, you're doing this or, or you're never going to have my babies. You're playing Saul or uh, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do surgery on you while you're sleeping. So, <laughs> But um, each person played their part really good and – at first, it made it very, very like, are we looking at people fighting over artistry is mm-hmm. what it kind of yeah, seemed yeah, like. Sort of like, like yeah, it's sort of like, what, it's, it does have something to say about art, you know, a little mm-hmm. bit, but uh, uh, that's not the main point of this. But, yeah, it's, yeah. I I know that Chris Stewart's been, like, vigorously defending this movie because people, people have thoughts on it. Um I mean, I understand why people walked out because, I mean, they just couldn't understand what was going on. And plus, if you don't see the whole movie, yeah, 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 uh, then you're going to walk out and it's going to be like, this is a bunch of weird people yeah. cutting each other open. Empty your bladder before the movie. <laughs> Make sure you're completely avoid of any uh, food or, you know, things you have to pee because you don't miss it and uh, you don't want to throw up, which uh, I pay- apparently some people were visibly sick after seeing this movie. I, nice. Yeah, I wasn't. I thought it's. Yeah, I took it in. Well, I mean, you're you're the kind of person that collects body parts. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the back room. I have arms and legs, hearts. But um, dude, that's why you got such a big back lot yard. <laughs> that's why it's uh, bumpy out there. That's why you keep on randomly getting new gardens all yeah, the time. Right, right, right. Um, and beautiful, beautiful um plants, but. I, what, what kind of smoothie is that, dude, that you're stuck on over there? You said there's vitamins in it, but what's in it? I don't know, strawberry, banana, B12, okay. stuff like that. Yeah, I got to take my vault might have been. Uh, but, yeah, this movie, uh, you uh, did you did you like it, you think? Yeah, it was creepy. It was weird. It was, it, it had, I, like, I love the, I love exact, I'm, I'm defending it more than I can anything else. Because, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Natalie Portman might, would have been, you know, I wish she would have been the original instead of Kristen Stewart. You know, that was supposed to be the person that was supposed to play that. It just been nice to see her in a weird movie again. Um, but like the movie really, yeah. What really, uh, what what really brought this movie together too was the sound that the the the. the oh, soundtrack. dude, I love I love the music in this. It's now, uh, it's very '80s. Like this movie, like you know, Cronenberg's a eh, filmmaker. He did a lot of stuff in the '80s. So you, you go at he's feeling the way that the plot moves together and the, the soundtrack. I meant to bring that up. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. But yeah, the soundtrack is very like awesome. 
Yeah, that is deliberate because Dave actually had a guy named Howard Shore who did the Dead Zone oh. and collaborated with him on the Dead Zone and also the Brood from 1979. Mm-hmm. It was that person, and he wanted to do sounds that you don't know if it was actually a sound effect of the movie yeah. or if it's the music in the background. Like yeah. he wanted it you to be confused on that way as much as the confusion of what you're seeing with your own eyes confuses you as well. He very well put it together. I watched a whole um, like 20 minute video with him, Vigo and Leah like uh, describing the scenes in the movie and him going through it. I wanted to bring up the fact that this, this movie makes it, it's in the future, right? But I really feel like it's there's not a time where you can be uh, looked at like for example, you know, Back to the Future, twenty fifteen mm-hmm. past, it's nothing like that. They pay a future that would never happen. So I think in that way, it's kind of timeless. Um, don't say yet, never, dude. What? Why do you think this couldn't happen? I'm not saying it's it could very happen. true. It could, it could it, happen, but it didn't date itself. You know what I mean? So this could be a time, you know, three hundred years from now, or you know, two years from now. I'm just saying, like, like they may, he may very. I thought it was very interesting that he was able to make this yeah, it's, timeless it's in a way. futuristic, but not futuristic in the way that it dates itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's you what know, I'm And, and uh, by any means, the uh, surgery part of it, and again, the technology of whatever they're using looks very more... Biological. Like, and like, Biological. Yeah. But then when they're working on it, they work on it like a car. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> it, it's, it, it didn't make sense to me. That That's that's one of the little confusion things I had. It's like, this is supposed to be kind of like biology, you know, like biological. But then at the same time, it looks like they're mechanics working on a car. You know, like. I do want that little control that uh, Vigo had. I just want that on my desk so I can just play with it. <laughs> like, like um, yeah. I hate to tell you this, you're uh, you're going to be very sad. Uh-huh. It's not real. What? Uh-huh. Yeah, that was CG. Uh, okay. Well, that's absurd. There, there's a there's a little there's a little pouch that they made it, but the colors and all that stuff, there was not uh, there wasn't LEDs in anything that was all CGI. That's very upsetting to me. Fuck this movie. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. no. But, I, again, I watched like a big thing yeah, yeah. on like uh, him describing uh, creature. I watched uh, yeah, so. uh, three or four interviews of Dave, uh, David uh, Kornberg, uh, just going into all the information about this it's, movie. It's weird. David Kornberg, he's a big um, being Canadian. He's a big guy. He's, he's in Canadian to the stage. But the three main mm-hmm. actors are Canadian and all. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, like, I know Vigo and Kristen are just American. And, uh, what is that all about? A uh, woo-boot. Yeah, I was a uh, boot. But, uh, no, David Kernberg, he, uh, he's a crazy man. And so he made a crazy movie. And the movie's called Crimes of the Future. <laughs> and, um, hey, boy, every movie the guy, I mean, The Fly, come on yeah, now. Yeah, fucking uh, Scanners, I just watched that movie. Just watched mm-hmm. Scanners. Video Drum, mm-hmm. I watched about just a couple months ago with my buddy Ryan. And, I, I you know, with James Woods. And, um, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I... I I do like this movie, Dave Kernberg. Yeah, I'm glad he's back doing body horror and creeping everyone out because that's what we need in this world. Creeping people getting creeped out by uh, some crazy shit. Also, guys, he did. Yeah, so- he also did the Eastern Promises and uh, History of Violence. He didn't write those, but he did direct those, and those are both really good movies. So, I mean. And he's done a lot of acting too. I mean, like he was in good movie. Like he was in like Jason X, uh, like Star Trek Discovery slasher. Yeah, like, like he does a lot of work, man. He does a lot of stuff. He's busy. But um, all right, let's get some quotes and uh, let's get our scores and get her done. Get her done. Um, I don't want you eating anything you find, <laughs> and I don't care what it is. It's a brand new organ, never been seen. And it's moving. Surgery is the new sex now, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a disco- It's like discovery a new species of animal. More like a new Picasso, if you say. Sure. It is time to stop saving it. It is time to stop. Sp- oh, it is time. It is time to stop seeing it is time to stop speaking it is time to just listen mm-hmm. what am i saying with the body of art is i don't like what's going on with the body <laughs> 
I install doors and windows into the future. Sex is surgery. How many times did I write that down? Uh, <laughs> I confuse, I confuse, uh, I confuse them. They didn't believe, and that makes it the perfect crime. I want your advice as a neo organ generator. I'm not very good at the old sex. We are creating an we are creating art from anarchy. We have to start eating our own industrial. Oh no, no, we're gonna stop that one there. Uh, if you're going to be good living, oh, if you're gonna be good at being undercover, some part of you has to believe your story. <laughs> I, I just realized one of the quotes I was about to say was about to give away a big part of the movie, and I had to stop it. <laughs> okay, so uh, a lot of people, um, huh. this a lot of people were really upset with this movie. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read a quote. I'm gonna read it. Uh, am I, do I get a guess before that you just tell me how much they're upset, or do I get to like? Are Are you gonna ruin this part? We didn't even give our freaking scores yet. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, sorry. All right. Uh, well, are, are are you did did you? I told you caffeine. Did you get any caffeine? No, no. But here's the thing. I wanted to read this before you had our scores. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Fine. That's not how that goes, bro. Fine, we dude. read them after we get our scores. All right. Fine. This is okay. This is not from. The, this is just a okay. My score in this is a four point one. Uh, he says almost awesome. I I thought this movie was great. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Um, I I had uh, I found a lot to like about it, and I was excited to see it, and I wasn't disappointed. Uh, I'm going to have to go a 3.9. Mm -hmm. I wish there was a few things just a little bit better to uh, describe. Mm -hmm. I understand the whole of the movie. Mm -hmm. I understand what it was saying, and I understand everything about it. I just think there was a few things, especially used technology-wise, that I just want a little more. I want a little – I just need to – I need to have that info because it just – some of the things kind of just look weird. I disagree with you. I kind of like the fact that it wasn't explained, but, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, the stuff just kind of looked out of place. I mean, everything looked out of place in this movie to me. <laughs> yeah, organs. I mean, I know they filmed it all in one warehouse, so how could it all be, you know? Yeah, I got you. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what is the Creek score? Oh, we're on tomatoes right now. You, I gave it 4.1, you gave it 3.9. What, mm -hmm. what is the audience score in this movie? 42. You're close. 48. Ah, yeah. 42 is the answer to everything. Um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the crease score in this movie? They're going to go higher. They're going to be 69. 79. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Chris consensus is quintessential, if not classic Cronenberg. Crimes of the Future finds the director revisiting familiar themes with typically unsettling flair. I want to read the... Um, <laughs> I want to read... Rex Reed's um, review of it. A zero. You give it a zero. <laughs> Here's what he said. Crimes, oh, of wow. Crimes of the Future is a load of crap. I'd like to find a movie, more civil way. It's great you know, a sick and depraved Bart bag and movie like this one. But defeats every reasonable attempt to try. And here's a nice one by Sarah Michelle Fetters of MovieFreak.com. Crimes of the Future is a futuristically retro slice of bloody body horror that leaves me speechless. It's twisted to sit into madness. Fusing the coddle with the audience or offer up a single happy evening. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I don't think Sarah. But uh, I don't... Some of these people are just like... I, I think... I, I don't understand someone who just thinks it's so fucked up and stupid. This movie, I like I this movie quite a bit. Um, some people don't understand high concept art, man. And it's okay. That's just the life we live in. Yeah, it's... It's visceral, provocative, provocative, and cool, and uh, some. Yeah, it's very, it's very provocative. It's very, you know, in your face. I mean, come on, how many years was it before people understood what the crow really meant? You know, yeah, yeah. like I know you're. It's fan, like it, it, it's just people are weird, dude. You can't trust humans. Should they trust us and telling us when they should go see Crimes of the Future? Uh. 
no, nobody should trust us. We're we're bad people. <laughs> we're, we're, we're assholes. So go see me. Go see me. I kind of look like Magnum PI today, don't I? I just thought about that. I need a mustache. Uh, Magnum PI. Wait, wait, aren't you the that person that says you can't like do facial hair good? No, I can't grow facial hair at all. Can, can you? You can do. Uh, I bet you can do a mustache. That so looks like Gomez Adams. Yeah, it looks creepy. Could yeah, you, you, go, saw it. you can do Gomez Adams mustache, right? I've done it before, but yeah, it's creepy. I look creepy. I look like I got a van full of candy. <sighs> do you have a van full of candy? I'm just being honest, yo. I'm just being honest. All right, fine. I guess that's it, right? Yeah, I guess uh, the two movies that we're doing next week, uh, we'll do some streaming because yeah. we only got three days now. But Jurassic World, uh, 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 Jurassic World Dominion we're doing for sure. Yes, yeah. that's the main one. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you guys have been online. We just on the uh, net. We're on Facebook at facebook.com. So that's me. This podcast. We're on Twitter, MTS Podcast. We're on Instagram, MTS Podcast. And we're on uh, Twitch, MTS Podcast. And we're uh, patreon.com. So that's me. Don't suck. And bonfire.com. So that's me. Don't suck. Some to do for shirts. And we're every week on podcast. We're every five podcasts. Come on, moves don't suck. And some to do. Your turn. Yeah. And if you got a small business, let us know. Give us information. We'll be more than happy to support your local business on our uh, show. Just send us an email, a message, a flag, smoke signal, whatever. Yeah, whatever makes signal. you happy. Yeah, we need smoke signals. Smoke signals are awesome. We yeah. like those. Uh, but I think that's it, buddy. All right. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some New. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And remember, guys, no matter what you do in this world, there's only one thing you can do. And remember surgery is sex. Have a good night. <laughs>